Alright everyone, welcome. I'm Riley. I'm Nicole. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about some study tips for 300 level Japanese classes. So when I first got to university, no one really told me much about like how to study. Like I had heard anecdotes of like, oh yeah, I was cramming the night before the test and then I got a hundred or, you know, people saying they pull all nighters and stuff. And I'm like, oh, it just sounds like a suck fest. <laughs> so um, my physics teacher actually recommended a really great book. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share a couple things that I thought would be really, be really, would be really beneficial for um, 301, 302 level classes. So the first kind of thing overarching is that learning, generally speaking, can be broken down into two phases. So the first phase is you're introducing new material to your brain, and then the second phase is recalling and strengthening the neural pathways that actually exist in your brain. Um, so one thing that you're doing that you could do when you're learning, actually introducing yourself to new material, is make it as like sensory dense as possible. So instead of just looking at a kanji picture on a flashcard and thinking like the definition in the reading, if you say actually read it out loud, then not only are you using your mouth and you're getting some muscle memory there, you're also hearing it. And you can even go farther and trace it out with your finger or actually write it out as you say it. Um, and so that way, what you're doing is you're involving your body a lot more in the process. And so it's a lot easier for your brain to go back and remember it because there's a lot more there to remember. Um, so that's for when you're actually going over new things. Um, when you're actually going back and trying to like study or recall the information, there's a couple things, um, four tips that I would suggest. So after you learn a new batch of kanji, test yourself on them right away. Um, that can boost your recall by as much as like 15 to 25%. And if you don't have to spend as much time studying kanji, like, I don't know, I hate studying kanji. So if you can get out of there early, why not? Um, so yeah, go ahead and test yourself right after you finish learning a batch of material. After that, also vary the order you're learning things in. Like if you just learn, if you're studying kanji in the same order each and every time, you're studying the order, not necessarily the kanji. Um, so make sure that you're actually going through and varying the order, shuffling your deck of flashcards or something, or having a friend pick them off at random for you. Um, so you're going to hear it a lot. People say cramming works. And it sort of does for like short-term stuff, but if you're actually trying to remember kanji at the beginning of the semester for the final, you know, cramming them right before the first midterm isn't really going to help you. It doesn't stick. And so what you've got to do is actually space it out. Um, the point of recall is for it to be challenging, but not impossible. So if you can just pull it off the top of your head, you don't need to study that one. Give it a couple days and actually forget it a little bit, because then when you go back and try to remember it, it'll actually be you'll actually be building the pathways a bit stronger. Um, and this is the final tip, but for kanji especially, if you're just going through them, studying them, they sort of blur together. Like, they're made out of like the same hundred or so radicals. And so eventually it just, it kind of, it's like, oh, I don't even know anymore. So space out what you're studying kanji-wise with other things. And it doesn't matter what it is, like you could throw your chemistry flashcards in with your kanji flashcards, but as long as you give your brain more diverse sets of materials to study from, you're actually going to boost your ability to remember the kanji when the time comes for it. Um, so this is just paraphrasing um, stuff learned from Make It Stick by Peter C. Brown. Um, so please read that book. Like if you only read one book in your college career, please read that one. Um, and then another blog that's really good for like learning how to learn is Scott Young. Go ahead and look him up. He's got a lot of great things um, specifically designed for college students. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to talk about some tips um, for how to study specifically for 301, 302, um, especially reading the stories. I know they can get kind of long or kind of dry. The material is not particularly interesting. I felt that a lot when I took that oh, class. It yeah. was not my favorite. But... I mean, hopefully the BYU professors kind of know what they're doing. Um, so <laughs> hopefully it'll be beneficial to you, especially if yeah. you can study them well. So um, the first thing to understand in the stories is to just know the context. Know the characters in the story, understand you know, where it's happening, what's going on, you know, when the time period is set. There's a lot of um, historical um, stories about like the history of Japan stuff. So just get to know the context of your story, and it's going to make it a lot easier to get through it. Also, when you're reading through the story, look for things that are unexpected. 
Like maybe the author uses a, an expression that you hadn't thought to use, or they use a word and you know what it means, but you didn't think you could use it there. Um, just look for things that kind of catch you off guard and think about why they use them there instead of, you know, some other expression. Kind of get into like the details and nuances of expressions. The audio is going to be your best friend for these books. There's going to be a lot of characters that you think that you know, and then you listen to the audio and you're like, oh, I've been reading that wrong for my whole entire mission. So listen to the audio, get used to hearing that native speaker's flow, and then try to replicate that yourself when you're reading it. Mm -hmm. Also, when you're reading, look between the lines. Um, like You can look at like the literal definition of words as you go by. Um, but the point of 301 and 302 is to help you learn how to speak discourse, like longer segments of Japanese. And so it's important to think about like what the author is intending here, the nuance they're trying to communicate, and how that affects the sentence like three sentences later, and you know how it all fits together as a bigger picture. Stop using English direct translations for your definitions for the Japanese mm -hmm. words. There are so many words that just don't even translate into English. So don't try to think of an English equivalent. Just understand what it means in Japanese in the Japanese context. Think of words like sumimasen. Mm -hmm. Like, you think that that means excuse me, but then once you're in the culture, you realize there's like a hundred different so meanings for that word, and there's that. no English equivalent mm -hmm. for that word. So just try Definitely. to avoid English equivalents as much as you can. Or like natsukashi. Like we say that all the yeah, time, but you there's can't nothing say that in English. English. Yeah, like that's you weird. say, oh, that's, you know, and yeah. you're like, no, you Nostalgic? can't. Nostalgic? Yeah, like, <laughs> right, right, right. yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, but the final thing is please come to class prepared. Actually understand the story. Um, like I mentioned before, the point is to be able to speak in longer segments of Japanese. And so if you don't know the story or the material you're supposed to be talking about, then you can't really talk above sentence level with it. Um, so actually take the time and read the stories. They're not that hard. They're generally speaking not even that long. Um, so just go through and actually make sure you understand them when you come. And so that's it. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck.